Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video lesson, we're going to be looking at two mechanics that we have in this little prototype here. We can push on the boxes or we can pull them. And let's say the objective is to collect the skull at the end, so we have to push and pull these puzzle pieces so that we can collect the skull. So we're going to be looking at the implementation of these two features, and I'm going to pick this up, and basically that would end the game. So let's actually get started by opening up a project that isn't finished. Okay, so I have this project loaded up and it's the unfinished version of what we were just working with. Let's take a quick look to see what we're working with. The room is set up just like almost any basic platform where we have some collisions and then a bunch of tile maps or tile sets and then we have our instances. So I'm not gonna go too far into this, but uh, we're gonna come back to the room itself. If we go over to the objects, let's start with the box itself. So this is what we can pull and push. And I want you to pay attention as we have everything underneath the parent here. You can see that everything is inherited. So anytime we want to do something, we're just basically assigning the sprite and everything will take over. So if we open up the parent and let's go to the create event. You can see that we have some horizontal and vertical movement, just like we should. And we also have a interaction radius. So this is going to tell the player, so the character, um, how far out they can be before they interact with this object. And we will come back to this, but let's go to the step event. And you can see that we have some collision script here. And this is the default, or pretty much the same setup that you would find on all the platformers, except all we're doing is passing in what object we want to check that we are colliding with. And then it does the place meaning for horizontal, then the place meaning for vertical, and it does all the movement and stuff like that. So it's just a little simpler, and we only really have to call the collision on the scripts that we want. So you can see that I'm colliding with our solid objects, the push and pull parent. So anything that I assign to be push and pulled, it will automatically automatically collide with. And then we're colliding with the character and our object skull, which is what we're picking up. Now probably you'd have a parent and you'd uh, name the parent in here instead of the skull. Anyway, quickly going through uh, some more of this code, we just have the horizontal and vertical movement. And then here is where some of the magic happens. Right now, uh, we're checking to see if we have a collision. Now we set it to no one, and the reason that we're doing this is because we need a way to stop the objects that we're pushing or pulling. Because basically what we're doing is when we run the game here, whenever we go up to an object and we push it, we are giving this object the same speed as the object that we are pushing it. So if I'm coming here from the left and pushing it on the right, obviously the code is not implemented, but this box would get the same speed of our player and then giving the illusion of a push. Also, when we do a pull, we're giving it the same speed. So what we need to do is we need to see if our player is within our collision mask and if they are not, then we are assigning our horizontal and vertical movement to zero, basically meaning that we've stepped out of that mask. Now I'll go through this quickly because we're using a case statement here. Basically we're saying if we want to use a circle collision, we just draw out a circle and we check for the object character. If we're doing a rectangle, we do the same thing, except we just check for the object character, just like before. Now. The way that this is set up is over here you can see on the parent we also have some variable definitions. So we have the collision type of circle or rectangle. We have a collision buffer and I can't really remember if I'm using this or not but basically the thought of this was going to be it would give a buffer around the, the mask that we're using. And then we can set debug to true or false. And I have this in most of my games. And you can see right here in the draw event if debug is set to true then we're just going to draw a uh, line either circle or rectangle around that object. For instance, if I go to the room and let's pick this box right here, if I double click on it and then I go to variables, you can see that I can change this stuff here. It's already set to rectangle, but what I want to do is change debug to true. And when I run my game, that particular object is going to have debug set to true. So it's going to have a green interaction circle around it. And you can see if I go to my player and I go to variables, I don't have it here. Okay, that's a bad one. But I know that in the character itself, in the create event, I have the bug set to false error. So if I were to turn that to true and I go to the draw, you can see them drawing an interaction, uh, interactive circle around my player.
Okay, so the player is set up as some kind of default stuff. This is stuff we've all gone over before. The only thing that's really different here is we have a use key. So if, we've, if we're holding down that use key, then we are just gonna be able to pull on that, on that interactive uh, object here. Now, I do have some things like interaction radius, and if you looked up the pickup object tutorial, this will kind of kind of ring a bell. This is basically just saying, uh, let's turn this to actually true and we'll see it. What this is doing is it's just putting a pixel circle around our character, just taking the width and basically just multiplying that by 16 pixels. Uh, okay, now the uh, meat and bones of this. We have our movement code, we have the collision, and we're just calling that script. Then we have the push and pull objects, which we're gonna write then we check for the collisions to make sure we're not going to go out. And finally, the animation states. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just work on the push objects first. So this is going to be pretty simple. What we need to do is we need to figure out if we have any of these push or pull objects within, uh, or sh I should say, the position that we're moving in or the direction that we're going in. So in here, we could just say VAR instance equals, and we could say instance place, and you've seen this before, so we'll just say X plus the horizontal movement, Y, and what we're checking for is the object push and pull. Then we could say if the instance does not equal no one, meaning we found an object of push and pull within um, the X direction plus or minus our horizontal speed, and if we have found an object of push and pull, then we could say instance dot horizontal movement equals, let's say horizontal movement. So our character's horizontal movement. And I'm just gonna give it a little push. So this is gonna be a plus or a minus depending if we're going left or right. Now, if I hit F5, when the game loads up, I should be able to at least push the objects. And you can see that I can push them. I can't pull them and I can't push them up and down. And that's just because we haven't done that code yet. So to do up and down, it's basically the same thing. Well, we just have to copy this here. We don't need the var anymore because we've already declared it up there. And then instead of saying X plus horizontal movement, we'll say Y plus the vertical movement. And if we find an object of push and pull, then we want to change its vertical movement to equal our player plus either minus one or one, just to give it a little bit of a push. Now, if we run our game once more, we should be able to push this object. And let's push this one. And you can see, I can't really collide with the wall, but it seems to be working. Now, we could easily go to our room and let's go to our instances and put a box here. And I just wanna make sure this is all set up. Let's actually set that to true and hit F5, we should be able to push this box to the left. We just want to make sure we test it, and you can see I push it to the left and push it to the right. All right, so the only real thing left to do is going to be pulling one of these objects. So down here we have a region for pull. Now, I just want to make sure that we're going to be checking our collision after we do all this because we are changing um, the instances uh, vertical movement, which then will change the X and Y position. So how the pull object works is I'm going to be using this key use. So say if keyboard check. So if we are holding down the use key, which in our case I set to uh, the space key, if I'm holding that down, then I need to grab another instance. Now I can use this variable again. I might as well. I'll say instance equals collision and I wanna use collision circle. So when we are drawing our player, when I set this to true, you'll notice that there is a green circle around our player. Oh, I didn't finish that, let me comment that out and run it. So the green circle around the player is actually gonna tell our boxes or whatever we're colliding with, whether or not we are going to be hanging onto this object to pull it. So we wanna say, is the object within this circle and are we holding down the use key and if we are then we're going to allow the object to be pulled in whatever direction um, basically we're going to walk in so we could say 
instance equals collision circle at the x and y position. And we're going to use our interactive, or sorry, interaction radius. And what we're going to look for is the object push and pull. I do not want precise and do not include me, the character, in the collisions itself. Now I can say if instance not equal no one, meaning that we found an instance of object push and pull, then all I have to do is say instance dot horizontal movement equals horizontal movement. And I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to say vertical, vertical, and vertical. All right, so now let's hit F5, and we should be able to walk up to one of these, and let's hold down the space key and try and pull it, and you can see it works. I can push it. Now, the only thing is I can also kind of pull it from the side, but that's fine for at least this case. Maybe that's something that you'll want to handle. But I can come over here. I can push that one all the way up. I can just grab this one and uh, then I can go all the way down here and pull this one over. You can see that the push and pull mechanics are working just as we said. And I can just pick this up and there we go. We are complete. Now the one thing I will show you because I will probably get asked is how I did that skull. Um, you can see there's no... You know there's no collisions for the skull here. It's a simple if the skull collides with the player. Then we set can move to true. I play the sound and in the step of it, if I can move, then it will skip this. But if I can move, it basically just lurps to a certain position and then just fades out and then destroys that skull itself. And with that, that is the entire tutorial. Uh, I will have the source code up for those who are Patreon supporters. So you can go and you can download the source and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching the video and a huge thank you to all the anonymous supporters on Patreon as well as Jay, Gust1, Paul, and Wayne. Thank you for all your support.